Welcome to the Parameterized Algorithms course on uh, the NPTEL platform. Uh, you are perhaps here after a uh, first course in algorithms uh, sparked your interest and you're curious about what's next or maybe you've already done a couple of uh, graduate level courses in approximation or randomized algorithms and maybe you've heard about parameterized algorithms and you want to know what the fuss is all about. So either way, I think you are in the right place. And uh, in this uh, short introduction, uh, I'd just like to share with you some background and motivation for the kind of topics that we will be covering in the course. So let's begin by talking a little bit about algorithms and how we typically think about them. We usually are pretty ambitious when it comes to algorithm design. We want our algorithms to uh, be efficient and correct all the time, which is to say that we want them to run in polynomial time and we expect them to do the right thing on every conceivable input. Now, come to think of it, that is a little bit demanding and it may not always work out for all problems. I mean, while you have typically had this experience of coming up with such algorithms for a wide array of problems, uh, even ones with exponential, uh, exponentially large search spaces, which of course is impressive um, and you always ask yourself, can we do better, can we do better and so on. Uh, but at some point you encounter problems for which the question in fact becomes, can we do this at all? And the answer seems elusive. And in this context, you might have come across the framework of NP completeness, uh, which tells you about the possible limits of computation. And uh, the thing about NP completeness, however, is that that's typically where uh, an undergraduate algorithms course uh, stops. And it must feel like a bit of a cliffhanger because while NP completeness is a really useful guide in terms of what not to look for, in and of itself, it's not really an answer. It's not a solution. So if you have an NP complete problem at work, then just a declaration of its NP completeness is not going to get you very far. So it's not surprising that a lot of effort has been dedicated to uh, coping with NP completeness and coming up with strategies uh, that are basically in the spirit of what's the next best thing that we can do. And the traditional approaches have uh, usually involved relaxing one of the many demands that we make from our algorithms. So for instance, you could let go of looking for the optimal answer all the time. So maybe in your situation, close enough is good enough. Or maybe you're happy if your algorithm does what's expected to do on a sufficiently large fraction of the inputs. So the number of times it makes a mistake is somehow bounded reasonably and you're happy with that. Maybe your instances are generally small and you can settle for an exponential time algorithm. This would mean letting go of the efficiency criteria. Maybe your instances have some special structure and you want to exploit that. So with parameterized algorithms, the approach is uh, both somewhat different as well as somewhat in the spirit of all of the things that I have just described. To understand what we typically do in um, the parameterized framework, uh, let's go back to the drawing board and think about how do we report the performance of our algorithms. Typically, we use asymptotic notation and we usually think of it as a function of the size of the input. But again, if you think about this for a moment, you'll realize that thinking of an instance or trying to capture an instance just in terms of its size uh, can be fairly limiting. So let's illustrate this with a simple and hopefully familiar example. Let's go back to a favorite uh, graph algorithm, say breadth first search. If you had to report the running time of breadth first search, you could say that it's linear in the size of the graph. So you could say it's order n plus m on graphs with n vertices and m edges or you could say that the worst case complexity is bounded as order n squared where n is the number of vertices in the graph. Now there's no right or wrong here. Both of these are valid upper bounds on the running time of the algorithm but notice that when you say order n plus m you're revealing more about the behavior of the algorithm and in particular you are uh, saying, for example, that the algorithm actually runs in linear time on sparse graphs. A sparse graph is one where the number of edges is uh, linearly bounded in the number of vertices. This piece of nuance, this piece of information is completely missing when you just say order n squared as sort of a catch-all upper bound for the running time. 
Now taking this a bit further, let's say you're working with some NP-complete graph problem, and let's say you're able to come up with an algorithm whose running time is exponential in the diameter of the graph. How will you report this running time? If you think of it as two to the n in the worst case, you would be correct, but you're missing out on a wealth of information that is provided to you when you think of it as two to the diameter. When you think of the running time as being exponential in the diameter, you realize that this algorithm is actually a good old polynomial time algorithm on any graph whose diameter is bounded, either by a constant or even, uh, even by log n. And that's kind of the mindset shift that we are after. We want to think of the running time as a function of not just the input size, but various other relevant aspects of the input. There is typically a lot of rich structure in the inputs that we are dealing with, and it seems to be a huge missed opportunity to not leverage that. So this idea caught steam in the early 90s. Uh, there was a series of highly influential papers by Downey Fellows, and, and this led to the birth of the area of parameterized algorithms. This way of thinking about algorithms not only explained some of the existing alg algorithms that ran surprisingly well, even when the context was an NP-complete problem, but just the style of thinking uh, spawned an entirely new and exciting toolkit. It just uh, forced us to think about problems in a new light. And this is the toolkit that we want to share with you through this course. So uh, by the end of this course, I hope that you will have an appreciation for why this multivariate way of thinking about algorithms analysis is um, both interesting and even productive in practice. And also I hope that you will be at a point where you'll be able to read and make sense of uh, cutting edge research in the field and hopefully also consider contributing to it yourself. I'm also especially thrilled to share that this course will also be taught by Professor Saket Saurabh from the Institute for Mathematical Sciences. Uh, he's somebody who has made pioneering and fundamental contributions to the area, and you'll be hearing from him as well. So if you have any questions about the course, please feel free to reach out to us, and we look forward to seeing you on the other side. Thank you for watching.